RBBs. Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome back to Grounded as we're taking a look at a f possible future update. Uh, I don't know exactly when bees will be coming to the game, but they definitely are modeled in. Ooh, and they're, lo they're looking really cool. Thanks again to Sir Simlot for sending me this footage, as always, as he is uh, deep into the dev tools and able to spawn in things that will be coming in the future. One thing that was uh, recently added in a uh, update behind the scenes is why we call it updates is that there is a wasp nest and we'll show you where that is here today as well as anything to do with bees so yep let's spawn some more bees there and of course honey bees are what these are bumblebees or whatnot uh, there's honey in the pollen in the game and then there's uh, aphid honey so we might be honey do but we might be able to find honey if we uh, are the bees actually trying to pick that up they kind of look cool wow look at how beautiful I, I am still impressed with how beautiful this game is I really hope there's could you imagine this game with seasons Probably would never take place because it's supposed to take place over like a few days. But here we go with the uh, the bee stinger. Oh, wow. oh, there we go. Doing a little damage. They almost sound like a ghast from Minecraft. Well, let's see. Uh, yeah, they're wow. They are all over the place. I don't know if they're fully programmed in, but I feel like a bee would be about this uh, unpredictable. But if you attack one, they don't necessarily attack you just yet. So it's probably going to be something in the future where they'll be a little bit more aggressive. They seem to be about they seem to be uh, uh, about as aggressive as the ants in terms of they'll probably be passive towards you just like the worker uh, ants but if you attack the bees they might actually attack you now these are probably worker bees too that are supposed to go out and get all the pollen and whatnot and here's all the armor and such that you can get in the future it's a level two armor and with a full set uh, you get the uh, fuzzy uh, uh, the full set bonus for that one so there it is down there. The bee shin guards, shoulder pads, and face mask. Before you can find those in the anthill, we'll go over where to find those soon, as well as the stinger spear. So as you know, in this game, whenever you eliminate enemies, they do drop random different parts, and it looks like berry leather will be needed for the bee uh, armor as well. So a little bit of a bonus if you were able to get all of that. Uh, the berry leather is a little bit of a pain in the neck to get. If you're playing multiplayer, of course, you know that there's a little bit of an issue at the moment with uh, berries spawning in with multiplayer. You know, like where if uh, somebody knocks down one of the berries, they might not be able to see it. So the host of the game might need to go out and get all the berries for you. But if you're playing solo, you should have no problem. Uh, it seems like berry leather is also extremely important for both the hunt, the uh, bee armor and also the ladybug armor. So keep that in mind that both of those are pretty critical. So Simulot here tabbed out while he's working on uh, typing in some new codes and stuff. But look at that. The, the world actually still continues to function. With these small little uh, additions to the map. Oh, it looks like we can actually uh, go out to the camera now. There's a hover camera now. Although I believe they took that away. Looking pretty good. Pete's a good character too, by the way. I think my favorite is Max, but Pete's just as cool. You can see his scabby there. The bee armor looking really good on the shins. The shoulder pads. Helmet. All looking good. Looks like a damn fierce warrior in that attire. Look at that. You know, the greatest scene of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids has got to be the bumblebee scene too. It's almost filmed like a, a World War II fighter uh, movie where they're just zipping around everything between the uh, um, the uh, clothesline and around the yard and uh, attacks Rick Moranis at one point and uh, hilarious. Okay, well there's our nectar there. That's what I meant is I think nectar can be picked up by the bees um, and maybe pollen will be added to the future so we might have some additional stuff but uh, the bees are more than likely going to be hanging out here near all the flowers which is uh, the rose garden here that is closer to the pond and then there's also some more flowers all around the uh, all around the uh, yard, especially around the pond. All right, let's run around here a little bit and see if we can do some damage with this. Again, uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, make sure you do so you don't miss out on future updates and turn on that notification bell so that way we can do some more giveaways of this game and such. Oh, yes, I, I said it, giveaways, that's right. We all have uh, plans to do some more giveaways to this game because it's just so fantastic. We're excited for the game. A lot of people were saying, whoa, slow down there, Tiger. You're doing a lot of videos on this game. Well, I'm excited. I want to see all this new stuff coming in. You know, it's like in Minecraft when you get all the new weapons and stuff. After a while, when that game updated, it was really exciting to see a XP coming to the game, the ability to make potions and do enchanting. And I hope, of course, no enchanting comes to this game. But I want new we weapons and items. I want crossbows and, you know, spears that we can throw that are more powerful, such as this one. And uh, we'll go see how much damage it can do eventually. But the bee armor looking really good and definitely making you, uh, making you look fly. <laughs> Wait, no, it's a bee. All right, sorry. Okay, well, let's go over here, and uh, where are we going to exactly go? Maybe a stink bug battle? This is probably good for taking on larvae and stink bugs. Uh, you will need your uh, gas mask for the stink bugs, but you got to kill one first. Everybody's got to kill a stink bug 
in basic combat mode. Uh, maybe an archer, you know, like a bow and arrow would be a little bit better for that. But now we're going to go over to the anthill and see if we can find out where some of that older rotten armor is. And I don't know if you can make rotten armor in the game in the future. I don't know what you'd have to do to make it rotten. Maybe, maybe all armor, eventually when it gets damaged enough, will become rotten. Perhaps if you uh, repair it one too many times, it'll then become rotten armor and will have different attributes to it. Maybe it won't be as good, but can still be repaired. All right, it is time to show you all where some of the things are now inside the game. You can make a beeline, pun intended, to where the rotten the bee armors are. Helion, champion of the sun. That's right. So there are three sets of armors you need here. The uh, shin guards, the shoulder pads, and the helmet. So as, as you go into the beehive, watch out for... Uh, sorry, as you go into the ants hill... We are a bee now, so it's almost like a beehive. Keep in mind that ants could attack you as well. There could be soldier ants here. A lot of the times they don't spawn until you're uh, deeper into the chambers within the anthill. But it's a good idea to keep on looking out for any sort of trouble. So keep in mind this is an early game secret. You may have seen it before, but I figured we'd do everything related to bees here. There's also quartzite down here as well. So if you ever need to repair your weapons, quartzite is what's needed to repair... Uh, pretty much every weapon in the game except for bow and arrows and armor. Those are repaired with super glue and other materials respectively for uh, whatever type they are. So here's your first armor, by the way. Right there is your uh, Rotten Bee shoulder pads, so you should find some other uh, body parts there. And there is a, a Burgle chip located just across from the body, so keep that in mind. Both of those found right there. And uh, there's your Rotten Bee shoulder pads in comparison to the regular shoulder pads. It looks like they're somewhat the same. Uh, but might be a part of a different set. Sprint distance. Oh, there it is. B parts. So this might have the armor attribute, but maybe not the speed attribute. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and try that out there. Okay. Looking good. So there's where to find a burgle chip. And there's where to find the B armor. Now there's uh, more B armor down here. Keep in mind, we still need two more. To make a full set in this game, you always need three. Head, chest or shoulders, and then uh, legs or shoes. Uh, so that anything in the top, middle, and bottom of the body. Now, there's also going to be more lanterns added to the game, too. So it, it might be a thing in the future where torches will go out underwater and you won't be able to use them. So it might be a good idea to uh, prepare for making any sort of underwater lantern if you're going to go do that. And uh, there you go. In fact, speaking of that, just on the other side of the body of the water there, boom. Rotten Bee Shin Guards, which is different in comparison to the other shin guards they actually have less defense interesting seemed like those two didn't have a difference before they may have but again sprint distance is uh, increased for the b armor there better sprinting if you do that very good they're just better now there's a hole in this chamber by all the grass and i believe the uh sometimes the ant eggs spawn down there and sometimes they spawn in the chamber ahead and there's a scabby too that you can find inside uh, the anthill. Now, again, the reason we're going in the anthill so much is just because there's so much bee armor that's found here, and it's pretty impressive and important to get earlier in the game, because it's just a free set of armor, and it's a little easier than crafting it, especially since it requires berry leather, and uh, since you can go here right at the start of the game and mostly avoid trouble, you're pretty good, uh, minus the uh, giant skulls around. Alright, the rotten bee face mask over on the left side when you enter that chamber there, and that is another thing there. That can keep you safe. Safer, of course. Pete is right about that. You're never safe, only safer. So again, comparing those two, the Rotten Bee, a little less effective than the uh, Fresh Bee Mask. But again, you can't get this until bees are upgraded or included in the game in a future upgrade or update. And it seems like those might be coming at any time. They could just uh, add bees at any time and say, hey, we've added bees and with the water update. So again, these are confirmed coming to the game. We just don't know when, and they are confirmed and... Uh, going to be in an update, of course, with all the things that we've seen here. Uh, they were quite, quite uh, obviously hinting at that with the first update of the first release of the game, having the bee armor. In fact, I believe available in the demo, where you could easily find that if you were looking for it. If you knew what to look for, you knew where you know where to find them. All right. So remember, Western Ant Hill, all three of those found there. Beautiful. All right, let's make our way to go test out some more of the bee stuff. Oh, wait a minute. Is this where one of the spiders spawn? No. There's a uh, wolf spider, I believe, that spawns in an overturned leaf somewhere near the uh, toad area of the uh, wetlands, but nowhere to be found now. All right, let's see if we can do some combat here. 
run it around just a little bit with our B armor. There we go, up over the top. Beautiful. Blocking with the B spear. Now you can also throw these. So if you ever wanted to get like a, a droplet of water or something off a blade of grass, you could throw it or just hit the blade of grass. Actually, I don't think that would work. I think you need an axe, but always good to have a ranged weapon. And this one, it would be nice with the bee stinger if it did some sort of a venom attack and uh, had a higher stun, perhaps. Like, it'd be really good to be able to throw one of these at a uh, wolf spider, have it stun it, and then go in for a kill with uh, maybe like um, a bow and arrow or something like that with your friends. Just keep it stunned and keep it back. Attack it at range, and once it's done, go and get your spear. Always good to deal with the uh, wolf spiders with range if you can. All right, let's make our way back to the... Rose bushes here, up over the top. B armor really good for sprinting, so as you can see, Sir Simulot here as he's playing, he's keeping himself off the ground, which that's of course where a lot of threats are found. If you jump from leaf to leaf, or especially on the clovers, they almost offer a perfect surface for parkouring, and the same goes for some of those uh, blades of grass too. If you're nimble enough, you can get a little bit of distance with those and uh, kind of stay above the trouble, especially around the oak tree. That's where a lot of the uh, wolf spiders and orb weavers are mixed in together. But you can also find yourself a ladybug there, too. And uh, it's a good opportunity to stay at range and attack it with uh, ranged weapons. Air bow and arrow and, of course, the uh, little spear here. Uh, you can also get a stuffed bee. So that'll be a decoration that you can hang from the ceiling at your house if you ever want to. And it looks like we're going to go into the dev tools here and do something new. Just looking up the code real quick and see what we can do for yet another secret. We got to show you that bee's nest now, slash wasp nest. Uh, it is probably going to be used for uh, something in the future, a placeholder of what will be there. There's our wasp again. So that is the noise of the wasp. You can hear it. So that's going to be a scary PTSD-inducing noise. Right now, of course, the model of the gnat. <laughs> and he just flies all over the place. So it seems like their best working model for a flying creature in the game right now is the gnat. So the bumblebees are probably resembling the... Uh, uh, the, the wow, that was funny how he was stabbing it there. It probably resembles the gnat, but it'll do its own thing eventually. And will be... I'm assuming it'll be more of a passive mob as where the wasp is going to be. Like the wolf spider or the orb weaver, where if you get close to it, it's going to be super territorial and aggressive and take you down. So it's a good idea to avoid that, if possible. All right, let's make our way to go do some more testing here. Next thing we're typing in... Oh, co a little copy pasta here to put in. What is this? There is a large object above us. Ah, there it is. So that is probably a wasp nest. It looks like a giant upside-down uh, wedding cake. But that's kind of how wasp nests look. It could be also be a beehive in the future. Again, this is just rough modeling, so they could turn this into anything. But I would bet that this is probably going to be the wasp nest. And man, they're going to be nasty. Can you go? Oh, looks like you can actually interact with it. Maybe you can get honeycomb from the inside if it's a, a bee's nest instead of a wasp. That'd be kind of cool. But it is a pretty large object, and it's hard to say whether or not you're going to be allowed to go inside there. Keep in mind, whenever the music drops out like that, uh, Sir Simulot is tabbing out to go look up uh, new commands and such, as there's uh, he and his evil group of scientists. I shouldn't say evil, but they're masterminds. They're criminal masterminds. There, that's better. Learning how to use the hover camera and do other things like that. Ah, so it looks like the uh, beehive has some nice flooring inside of it. That's good. At least they have some, uh, possibly a little linoleum down. I don't know. No, of course, the uh, beehive is probably going to be an item that you can go inside, but I doubt you're going to be able to take it out. In other words, I don't think you'll be able to destroy it, but you might be able to go inside and find some uh, items. It might be a very small area that you can go inside. So if it is a wasp, the wasp is probably going to be bigger than the bee, just like in real life. So it'll fit in there. But it could also fit the bees, too. So it remains to be seen, but we do have a look at the beehive and where it might possibly go. Uh, could be anywhere. Could be on the shed. There could be multiple ones, too. It could just be like the bee... Uh, ant hills where the beehives could be in different places. There's the abandoned ant hill and the western ant hill. There could always be more. It could be uh, placed up here in the shed somewhere in the corner. It could be near the house. It could be uh, on the oak tree. It looks like it's going to be in the back here uh, by the shed. So might possibly be a spot where if you go up on the shed, it could be a, a aerial battle up there. They're adding so much more detail to this neighborhood, this little house here. Um, really nice. There's areas still on the other side of the pond, the upper pond. There's many more areas for new items to be added. 
So we're going to have to see exactly what they come up with. But the pond is one big biome. If you haven't seen that video yet, make sure you go back and look at that. But this is just really interesting to see all the things that they'll be including in future updates and already out with the water update. Boy, the bee looks really... The bee actually looks really cool. I wish you could uh, use the bee eyes for your helmet. Actually, it looks like you, you do have that. It's kind of harder to see unless you're looking right at it. I'm more interested with the uh, like the blonde looking hair. So there's some items for the bee. Uh, we have bee fuzz, high quality fuzz, iconic black and yellow colors. Very cool. Bee stinger, that'll be used for uh, making your spear. And an unknown item, possibly. Uh, bee, bee fuzz, there's a few things that they're going to possibly add later on. And of course, keep in mind that you'll be able to analyze those things too. So a big question I have for you watching right now. Do you think they will... Uh, restart the game every time that there's an update or would you like to restart every time there's an update? Myself personally, I wouldn't mind if we had to restart every single time for the story um, I think building bases in this game is time-consuming, but it's not difficult once you've unlocked a few things with Burgle And once you have more quests to do meaning more enemies to uh, defeat You'll be able to get some of those higher tier unlocks right away and basically be able to rebuild your house every time or go build in a whole new area now that we know the water update will be coming soon for the pond, it might be a better idea to go build over by the pond versus building over by, for example, the baseball or building by the anthill. So it's going to be really interesting to see how combat is going to work with the bees. Will they swarm you? Will they call for reinforcement like the ants do? That could bring in a lot of bee fuzz and a lot of bee stingers too. And of course, will make for easy to make armor, uh, especially if you have yourself a bunch of uh, berry leather sitting around. Berry leather... Pretty easy to get so long as you go on a specific trip for it. So, again, all this bee fuss here makes the shin guards, the stuff bee, face mask, the stinger spear, all that stuff there uh, is used in the construction of those things. So, just like with the ants, when you're making ant armor, you need to get a few ants in order to make that armor. So, it's going to be the same with the bees. You definitely want to take down each one of those bees as needed. All right, let's spawn in. Oh, I see the bioluminescent cap or goop. Which I believe will be making, uh, could make the helmet if you need it. So bioluminescent goop there is a mysterious juice that allows for fireflies to glow. So that's of course another creature that will be coming soon. Firefly, another flying creature. So as far as I know so far we have ourselves the gnats, the wasps, the bees, mosquitoes, and fireflies I believe that can fly. Did I miss anything? There, that's all that we've confirmed so far that will likely be in here based on all the items that they've created. Ah, but we have a little fun thing to do here. Is it possible to outrun a bunch of tripwires for mm, ant egg bombs? I think it's bedtime. Tripwires might be really fun to use in multiplayer if you're all building alone in kind of like a PvP situation. But how will these tripwires work if we run across them? Now, Sir Simlot was experimenting. These are the tripwires for the egg uh, bombs. And let's see if... If we're pretending to be like an orb weaver or some fast-moving creature like the wolf spider especially, how will it work? Let's see here. So each one of those tripwires will set off a bomb to the right side, and they will go off in succession. I don't know if they each set each other off. So like, for example, if you trip the first one, will it make all the other ones explode just by the... Oh boy. By the, uh, the feel of the blast. Was that a wasp? Oh, it was just a regular bee. It looked like a wasp for a second. Oh boy. Okay. Well, that's uh, interesting. No damage whatsoever. Of course, this is the bee armor, which makes you run a little faster. So thank you, bee. You, you behave now. Excellent. <sighs> I really want to experiment a little bit more with tripwires in order to get them to kill enemies that are a little bit of a pain in the neck. Wolf spiders being one of them. The problem with those is that with the tripwires, you need to set them up first. Then you need to add the bomb to them. So first you set the tripwire. Then you put a bomb in it. You can't just, like, hotkey it and just have it set up magically. And it looks like you do need to put it in a fairly flat surface, otherwise the enemy might try to, like, go around it. So if you uh, make a flat surface and run from an enemy, you could trick them into getting it. Uh, it's a very good way to take down, apparently, uh, the large uh, Black Widow spider. Not the Black Widow spider, but the... Uh, I always forget the name. The one that is found on the... Uh, you probably know what it is on the, uh, the flying disc, on the frisbee. But I forget the name of it. It's the Broodmother, I believe. You'll have to let me know if I'm correct down below. So what kind of things do you want to see in the game? What kinds of weapons do you think would make the game better? I definitely want some more ranged weapons. I definitely want to see uh, more weapons being made from... Uh, like, it'd be cool to 
modify a weapon. Like, for example, with the uh, insect bow, it'd be really cool to be able to possibly use that and then maybe, maybe, maybe make a crossbow out of that. Like, it'd be cool to make a weapon better by making it into a different weapon. And what do we have here? Some sort of a throwable item. Oh, throwing bombs. Oh, I've never seen that before. Wow, that actually scared me. And it looks like it did not kill any of the bees. Maybe it, maybe it wounded them. They seem to be hanging around the plants, but I just believe at this moment their AI is not yet programmed. But the ability to see the the, the wasp slash beehive, it'll you know when they finish the model, we'll be able to know what it'll look like. But probably both. It might be a placeholder for both, and they'll build them differently. Looks like the bees trying to go in there and get pollen, and uh, possibly nectar from some of the. Uh, other trees there are the um, the bees might make the nectar too. If you uh, kill them, it may, maybe it'll drop pollen, maybe it'll drop honey, maybe it'll drop nectar, pollen, honey, uh, bee parts all together and make bees very valuable. Wow, look at that stack cake. Ah, I love this game. Well, we're about out of time today. Thanks to Sir Simlot for providing the footage for today. Again, you guys are awesome. So thanks for clicking and tapping that subscribe button, smashing that like button, and glory to Raptoria down below in that comment section. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye, guys. Salutations everyone, I'm Sir Similad and I'm the one who has recorded this footage you guys are about to see. I want to thank Raptor for allowing me to record this for him and working with me on this project that I like to call the ground walkthroughs and updates. So thank you guys all so much and I hope you guys enjoy.